Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today we're cooking something really, really special. We're doing dry aged volcano beef shanks. Okay, so we have this French beef shank from Porter Road. And by the way, thank you Porter Road for sponsoring today's video. But the cool thing about them is they're actually in Western Kentucky and I grew up in Western Kentucky. So it's really cool for me to be able to work with a company that's from where I grew up. Now these are dry aged like all the beef from Porter Road is. And we're gonna talk about exactly what we're gonna do after we get this out of the package. A couple things we need to talk about before we get this thing on the smoker. The first one is the meat is pretty thick, which means it's gonna take a little while to get it all cooked. Now, one good thing is that this bone is gonna conduct heat into the center of this cut. And so it probably won't take nearly as long as you might think just based on the size of the meat. So those are things that we're gonna expect. And so the principles of barbecue that we have employed in the past will still hold true even with a new cut. So this cut is new for me. I've never cooked one of these, but I'm really confident that we can make something really, really tasty with this. Now, the next thing to notice is there's a layer of fat on the outside, which is good. It'll help protect the meat from drying out, but there's not a ton of intramuscular marbling in the center of this, but there is something that's gonna help keep it juicy. That thing is collagen and connective tissue. Collagen hydrolyzes and forms gelatin. If you take this and you put it in a crock pot, all of that gelatin kind of leaks out into the liquid and it doesn't stay with the meat as much. When you do it this way, the gelatin gets really sticky and just makes every bite extremely succulent. So that connective tissue is actually gonna be a really good thing for the kind of cooking we're doing today. If we tried to sear this thing off and you know eat it medium rare, this would be a horrible cut. You would never wanna do that. This is low, slow, gentle cooking and it turns into something incredible. And the last thing is, looks like we have a little bit of marrow in this bone and so that's gonna cook out as we go through the process of putting it on the smoker and letting hours turn something not so special into something extremely special. That's what barbecue is all about. You take things that would not be super desirable and make them super, super good so that people wait in line forever just to have a bite of it. Barbecue is a special thing in that way. I've had venison shanks before and they were cooked in a crock pot. The people who did it put chipotle and adobo and a bunch of really tasty things in the crock pot. So they were really flavorful, but I think the texture could have been even better if all that gelatin hadn't leaked out into the surrounding liquid. We are gonna do it differently today. We're gonna to make sure that this thing stays juicy. We're gonna use a little bit of tallow later to make sure that we have plenty of rendered fat all around this thing protecting it. And at this point, all we have to do is season it. To season today, we're gonna to keep it pretty simple. We're using coarse ground black pepper, and instead of just regular kosher salt today, we're using Lowry's seasoned salt. It's got a little bit more flavor in it, but then also the grains of salt are smaller, so it's kind of saltier in proportion to the volume. So this is a pretty thick cut, so we wanna use plenty of salt and make sure that it can penetrate in there and give us something that's not salty on the outside, but no salt flavor on the inside. If you've ever seasoned a big thick steak immediately before you put it on the grill, you probably know what I'm talking about. The outside tastes great because there's salt there, but the inside tastes kind of bland because you haven't had enough time for that salt to penetrate all the way to the center of the meat. So I'm gonna start with the Lowry's, add black pepper, then it goes on the smoker. It's really, really simple. One last tip, to make sure that the bone doesn't get really dark, we want it to stay lighter colored and look really attractive when this is done. We're just gonna wrap some foil around the bone to protect it from the smoke because you're not gonna eat the bone unless you are just really calcium deficient or something. But we want it to look really nice. So it doesn't affect the flavor, but it does affect the appearance. Okay, we're gonna put this on the fat stack 80 at 250 degrees and we're using some hickory wood. We're gonna put it in there and not take a peek for three hours. We're just gonna watch the temperature, make sure we're burning a good fire. The 
The reason I'm cooking on the Fat Stack 80 today is because it's not going to be with me for too much longer. I have so many smokers around the house here that most of them I don't use. There are a handful that I use frequently and the rest kind of just sit. And so I thought, you know what, I would be much happier if people who would use this thing every weekend could use it. So I'm actually giving it away on Patreon. I do a monthly contest and this is the prize for this month's contest. These I don't think are actually going to go into production until 2023, but if somebody could be out there using it and enjoying it, I would much rather have that. So if you want to join this month's contest, you can go over and check that out on Patreon and you could win yourself a Fat Stack 80. It's been about five and a half hours and something interesting just happened. So let's take a look and we'll talk about it. All right, so with this thing right here, we were starting to develop really nice bark there, starting to render the fat really well. But what was happening is all the proteins in the meat were coagulating. That is, they're gonna be changing shape, getting tighter as we're cooking. And so what happened on this side right here, that silver skin that was just underneath the fat got pulled so tight and softened up enough that it tore. And so now we have this spot that doesn't really have any bark on it. Ways that you can kind of avoid this is cooking a little slower but it might just happen regardless, no matter what. If you see that, don't think anything went horribly wrong. It's just a part of the process of cooking. But if we take a look at the internal temperature of this thing, I bet 168, back here's probably a little lower, 162. What about in the back back? Okay, if we probe the temperature of the fat, 192. So that fat can get hotter than the meat can because the meat's always cooling off because it's always pushing out more water. Just like when you sweat, you cool off, same thing's happening to the meat. So we're gonna put this guy back on there. We're gonna let this front part bark up a little bit and then we're gonna wrap it up and get it tender. Another thing that's important to consider is that silver skin being connective tissue will break down just like we want everything that's tough inside the meat to break down. So as it got softer, it was exposed to the heat more. So it probably broke down enough plus that tension made it split. So not a big deal. We're gonna finish off this cook and we're gonna have something really tasty at the end. Okay, we're at about 180 internal right now. And so I wanna keep everything juicy and finish off the cook. And I'm gonna use the Wagyu tallow just because I think it has a really nice texture. It's gonna keep everything soft on the outside and nice and supple. I'm not gonna add any water or any kind of vinegar or apple juice or anything like that because I want that collagen that's hydrolyzed to stay gelatin and make the outside of the meat really sticky and just really luxurious when you take a bite. So I'm gonna pull it off, wrap it in two layers of 18 inch butcher paper and finish off the cook. We're looking for about 200 or so when we're done, but it's just when the probe goes in and it feels like butter, that's when you know you're done. Okay. That's warm. That looks really good. Now, let's drop some on here. This is gonna be easier. This is what I actually do. I just thought that this would look a little excessive. Now, I guess I'm gonna have to try to wrap it like this. Kind of an awkward shape. So, kind of awkward to wrap, but I tucked some of the butcher paper on the, on the bottom side so we can put it back on exactly how it was, finish it off. So we'll see you guys back in a couple hours. Make sure that you have an accurate thermometer so you know what temperature you're at. Um, my favorite is the Thermapen. I'll put a link for it below, but these are the best on the market. This is the Thermapen 1. The second best on the market is 
the old version of this, the Thermo Pen Mark IV. So these are great. They are one of those things where it's it's going to be expensive to buy it, but you're going to be so glad that you did. All right, we took this to about 203 and it started to feel really good, so we pulled it out and let it rest. Now, let's open this up and see what we've got. Okay, so unwrapping this looks really nice. We have great bark all on the outside, so we should have really good flavor. Also, it's nice and juicy when I squeeze it. You see juice just kind of pooling at the top. And then finally, here's one that you can hear. If you hear this sound, that tells you that my hands are really sticky because the collagen that's now hydrolyzed and formed gelatin, that's what we want. So we have super succulent meat, we hope. So I'm gonna pull some of this apart, give it a taste, and we'll find out. Oh, I almost forgot. This meat is from Porter Road. I've been using Porter Road for years at this point, and they've always delivered really great stuff. It's super convenient, shows up at your door, but I like them for reasons beyond just convenience. The first one is the quality of the beef. They raise their beef on pasture, and they don't add hormones or antibiotics. They take the highest quality care of the animal, and that has the effect of making the beef taste even more delicious. Also, they dry age their beef, all of their beef, for 14 days minimum, and that gives you a greater depth of flavor, kind of concentrates it and lets enzymes break the meat down so that you have a tender, more flavorful product in the end. Another thing you don't want to sleep on is the quality of their pork. So if you're used to just regular pork ribs that you get at the grocery store, you owe it to yourself to try some of the Porter Road pork ribs, for instance. I had some and I couldn't believe how tasty they were. So rather than just commodity pork you might find at the grocery store, with Porter Road you have the highest quality pork you can find really anywhere. I haven't had anything that tastes as good. So whether you're looking for dry aged beef, pork, chicken, or lamb, Porter Road has you covered. And because they function like an old school butcher shop, you can get odd cuts that you wouldn't find at the grocery store. So for instance, this volcano beef shank, I don't think I've ever seen it at any grocery store I've ever been to, but from Porter Road, you can get really cool stuff like this. So what Porter Road offers is the feel and quality of a local butcher shop, but in the online platform that allows meat to show up directly to your door to deliver maximum possible convenience. And because they care about quality, steaks and chops arrive fresh, never frozen. So for my viewers, you can get 15% off by clicking on the link below. Also, orders over $100 ship free, so check them out. I've been using them for years. I highly, highly, highly recommend them. So here we have bark on the outside, kind of the gelatin that we've created on the inside. This should be really good. That's awesome. Okay, so that was one of the best bites of barbecue I've had in a while. It, it's just, you get the bark and the smoke on the outside, and then the inside, because of all that gelatin, is just so succulent that I just want to keep eating more and more and more. It's not quite so fatty that, you know, it feels heavy, but it just has this different kind of, you know, gelatin-rich feeling, and I think that this would make probably the greatest beef sandwich of all time. Um, I, would, I would use this before I would use brisket. It's really good. Also... I would just sit down and eat this because I feel like I could eat more of this than brisket. And then the final thing that makes this thing really cool is it looks pretty awesome. So if you ever make one of these, if, if I were doing it, I'd probably make some polenta and put it on a serving tray, stick this thing on the top, take all the juices from the, the wrapping, pour that over it. And I think it would, first of all, taste 
incredible and then also look amazing. So people would say, what in the world did you cook? And you could say, yeah, it's a volcano beef shank. It's really cool. Okay, so my wife just came over and told me this is her favorite thing that I've ever made. And one of the reasons was because she could keep eating it and wasn't so heavy. So there are some things that are great like beef ribs, but they're packed with fat that's gonna make them really juicy and awesome. This doesn't have as much intramuscular marbling, but that gelatin that we've created is what makes it stay juicy. So a really cool and kind of a different barbecue item I'm very impressed. So you guys, I recommend trying this out. It's really neat. If you've done a million briskets and a million pork butts and 10 million racks of ribs, this is something you can try that you may have never tried before, but it is great. And the only way you can take something like this and make it amazing is low and slow cooking. And it really lends itself well to barbecue. And you don't have to cook it in a crock pot or something like that where all that gelatin leaves and you lose that kind of succulent nature that we worked so hard to create here. So if you guys enjoyed the video, you can hit the like button down below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Mad Scientist Barbecue. And then finally, if you want to win a free smoker, last month we gave away a Weber Smoke Fire. This month we're giving away the Fast Stack 80. Who knows what we're gonna give away next month, but you can enter to win those at Patreon. So if you wanna to go to our Patreon page, you can find that link in the description and you have access to a big community of people who love barbecue just as much as you do and you can win cool free stuff. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. This good. Good. One more? Okay. Okay. There you go. Mmm. It's good. Yeah, it does. It's really good.